Sanskrit Assistant Professor EC LIET would like to invite you on the 8th day of Atal FDP that is uh, AICT sponsored two week Atal faculty development program on recent trends in signal and image processing with hands on training using MATLAB. So already we have completed the seven days. Now I would like to invite our uh, chief guest Dr. L. Koteshwar Rao sir, principal KL University, Hyderabad. Sir has completed his uh, B.Tech in EC from JNTU College of Engineering, Kakinada and uh, Masters of Engineering from Andhra University and Sir also completed MS in Research from UEL London and Sir has obtained his uh, PhD from JNTUH. So, research area of uh, Sir uh, compromises computer vision, IoT, machine learning. Sir has published more than 30 research papers in reputed journals and, in, and also 12 conferences. Sir uh, holds five patents, one industry consultancy and two book. Uh, one among them, the textbook is uh, a very famous author, Taylor and Francis. Sir has more than 20 years of experience in India and abroad. Currently, Sir is working as a principal, College of uh, Engineering, KL University, Hyderabad. So, we are glad to invite you, Sir. Thank you. So, you can do that. Uh, respected uh, principal, Lord's Institute. Uh, Professor Narsimul sir, convener Sheikh Mohammad Rasul sir, and uh, co-coordinators and other members, uh, departments from uh, various colleges in uh, Hyderabad. Myself, principal uh, KL University Hyderabad, Dr. Kodeshwara. Uh, I am very happy to take part in Natal FDP, uh, which is. Uh, very rare opportunity for any institution here. Recently, we have completed uh, one of such in our university as well. About last uh, two weeks back, we have finished an FDP on data science and uh, uh, ML uh, for uh, agricultural applications. So today, uh, I am I am here to deliver a talk on um, the deep learning. I'm with me, my colleague is also there, will uh, assist me in uh, giving the practical or a hands-on session after some time once I complete this. My research area, basically my research area is uh, image processing. I completed my PhD under the guidance of uh, Dr. L. Pratap Ritigaru from JN to Hyderabad. Prior to that I was in abroad to complete my master's by research in uh, image processing itself. So, working in KL University Hyderabad for the last uh, five years. So, my though it is uh, uh, spread it to multiple areas of application, my route is from image processing. And uh, you know very well the requirement of today is uh, you have to spread your domains to other fields as well. This requirement of today, gone are the days uh, you say that I am an EC professor. So these days, nobody is going to accept you as a professor, unless otherwise you claim or unless otherwise you get expertise in uh, uh, some specific fields like deep learning, machine learning or IoT or any uh, AI. That's where you have to be different as per the needs of the industry, mainly academia. So in this perspective, I really appreciate the uh, department. I think probably this is EC department. Uh, I am uh, really feel very happy that uh, EC department got it. Being EC professor, I feel uh, delighted and I really congratulate for the uh, wonderful thing. Very few, I think five to six only got it, uh, we got from Telangana state. Apart from this, very few got it, not many got it. So uh, having that, that's really a wonderful uh, achievement I can say for an autonomous college like this. In future, uh, we will have uh, many more. I think you will have that. Once you get it, it's very easy to get more. Uh, this will really help you, your department, your faculty members to apply for some grants, uh, research grants of SOAP, DST, etc. Uh, first thing is, most of you might have, most of you might have uh, seen people always talking about image processing for many years. 
people say that uh, since you started your career of learning, last two decades or three decades, people of EC or computer science talk about uh, image processing. Majority. Am I correct? Majority people say that you may, some of you might have taught image processing also. Some as part of your academic uh, experience, you might have taught uh, image processing also. Uh, did some projects with students of your BTEC or MTEC because the people first of all uh, first of all you see that image processing is uh, very easy and second thing is you can get many projects there are so many reasons where you can uh, motivate your students easily to go and do some project in image processing there are so many domains you can easily get it that could be one reason but frankly speaking over the period how the image processing has evolved changed its uh, face from a typical image processing to computer vision, how that is moving towards deep learning and how that is helping to real systems, real life systems. Everywhere you talk about any new system, there is image processing in it. So that is the beauty of image processing. People say that image processing is outdated, but it is like people also say that it is like a poverty in India. People say that we have eradicated poverty, but still there is a poverty. Similarly, Many, many people say that there is nothing to do in image processing. This research is exhausted. It is already saturated. But I disagree. Lot of things are coming up in every, every day, everyday life. You have a lot more problems to be solved, which are closely relevant to image processing. Very closely relevant to image processing. Out of which we can uh, say that uh, notable or very significant uh, area of application of image processing is deep learning. Today, the concept is mainly deep learning with a computer science perspective, computer vision perspective, not closely related to electronics though, computer vision perspective, how that is relevant to real time applications, what we are seeing in day to day life. So you know very well, I don't want to read all the slides one by one, but uh, to make it more clear, sometimes we use slides which are really helpful for us to deliver a lecture effectively rather than talking in monotonous way, a typical lecture kind of thing. The first thing is image. People have defined, many people define image processing in different uh, ways. But as you know that standard uh, representation is always there. In different views you see. So here you can write, you can see that it is represented by dimensions. It's like in uh, height and width. A simple matrix form rather than simple matrix form you can say that on a number of pixels or the dimension of image any any image a typical image you take 500 by 400 and you know very well the root for any image is the pixel picture element is the root for it when you have seen early days of image processing where the resolution mattered a lot now the resolution is also changing with the availability of multiple devices. We will see that various steps of uh, image processing one by one. But image is defined like this. Then again, when you say image, the next question comes into our minds is what is a, a pixel? You say that uh, image is measured by the length and width, uh, width and height. Then obviously, you should say that what is the minute uh, part in it. That you, again you call it as a pixel. Pixel element. It is a point on the image that takes on a specific shade, opacity, color. It is usually represented in two forms. One is in grayscale format, other one is color format. Majority of us know it. Definitely, in, during your experience or during your study, during your learning or teaching or interaction, you might have seen grayscale images and color images. So first thing is grayscale image, you see that uh, a pixel is an integer with a value between 0 to 255, you know that. And the right side you say that 0 is completely black and 255 is completely white. As you move from 0 to 255, it is going from the no, nothing to fully dark, something vice versa. So grayscale, which is not completely gray, we can say that as a black and white, but over the period it has become a, a grayscale image. Earlier people used to call it as a black and white. Now we are calling it as a grayscale image in a polished format. Next is uh, RGB. RGB is again for the last 20-30 years during our childhood especially 
like 30 years people used to have very selective color images now last 10 years 20 years onwards everywhere people are forgotten the black and white image unless otherwise that is for show or something which is separate just for uh, attention purpose people are using it as a black and white but really we have moved our vision from forgotten that there is a color called as black and white now we are only fixing our minds towards color so obviously the color image is coming into picture that rgb plays a role again red green and blue a pixel is made of three integers earlier it is only one teacher one integer obviously here three integers obviously you have 0 to 255 0 to 255 for everything r has 0 to 255 g has that and blue has that so this is the introductory for mainly the uh, base basis for a typical image a standard image what is a grayscale image what is a color image next uh, next slide please yeah image processing is a process of transforming an image into digital form so people say that why should i process image first what is the need for an image processing i have image fine what is wrong with it so to make your image accessible to make your image usable for varieties of applications you require some processing very simple you take a, a raw gold a gold biscuit or gold ornament before ornament you take it and you can process it to multiple things for real time you can make it a bangle you can make it a stud you can make it a bracelet you can make it anything so same way image also should be processed so that that is used for different purposes different applications very specifically not for human being very specifically it is for computer so computer because you are dealing with your computer you have seen that an image as a human being you perceive it and you say that yeah this is uh, dr kodeshwar from kl university so, but how the computer can understand that's where the requirement of image processing the image processing system usually treats all images as 2d signals when applying certain predetermined signal processing methods that's what i told different methods you apply different methods to say that yes this image is a raw image and this is converted into this this image we have applied the technique to convert this into a real time application so without image processing there is no use of capturing the image itself you should always process it for multiple purposes not just capturing and all closing it so next slide please yeah you can just before that you can see that original image and processed image what is the matter what is the difference there you capture an image of an x ray if it is not processed as it is you will find that uh, something not clear obviously you have seen you have been seeing it from your childhood when you go to any x ray people say that an x ray machine doctor keeps it on the screen and sees so if it is not clear obviously that is going to affect your treatment the doctor is not clear about what exactly the image is so there is a application from root level it not it not necessarily that computer vision or not necessarily image processing from root level x ray when you give it to the doctor doctor identifies that how much clear it is if it is not clear doctor cannot proceed for the proper treatment sometimes it may be bad treatment you cannot blame the doctor there doctor might be experienced doctor very well experienced doctor but sometimes the data is not sufficient not data is not accurate the treatment also may go wrong that's where again the image processing is coming into picture so next is where is image processing is these are the multiple places uh, during my btech i never studied uh, image processing for your kind information i completed my btech in 2001 that time there was no image processing afterwards application of signal processing slowly emerged as uh, image processing that time you never know that people thought that maybe may in the initial phases but by the time i entered fourth year that time only we heard about uh, image processing book by gonzales then we used to take the xerox of the xerox of the xerox of that book and when i started my career immediately after by btech so i i was given that subject as a junior faculty so seniors never take it as an elective they introduced elective system so we forcibly i forcibly studied that image processing and developed the interest in it so that journey made me to travel in image processing in uh, mtech and then phd in abroad all this 
So what I mean to say is machine or robot vision was not there. That is the new generation requirement of image processing. It was not there at all. You have, you have not seen robot in real life. Now you have robot in your homes. There is a robot in our house which, which uses, which is uh, able to clean, uh, which, is, which can uh, mop the floor. You are seeing the robot everywhere. So, so robot, it goes to its docket, it gets it uh, itself recharged. If you give the robot, it goes to the point and then it completes its charging and then it starts working in the, on the flow. So the robot or machine vision, color processing, pattern recognition, video processing, transmission and encoding, medical field, image sharpening and restoring, facial recognition. All are very familiar, but these days we are slowly tilting or moving towards, we are skewed towards computer vision, we are skewed towards robotics, we are skewed towards machine intelligence. Unless otherwise machine is equipped with uh, some sort of vision, there is no real application anymore. You cannot, you cannot say your machine is intelligent unless otherwise it can see. If it can see the world, then only you can claim that yes, my machine is intelligent. It can sense, it can see, it can feel. Feeling is later, anyway, by sensing and all. But first of all, it should see. So these are the specific applications of image processing, which are very, very, very predominant these days. Very predominant these days. I mean to say, when you say about machine or robot vision, machine vision, it can be fitted to a computer, it can be to a robot, it can be for any sort of device, not necessarily a robot, not necessarily a computer, it can be for anything which can see, which can see that. Next slide, please. Yeah, this is again, as usual, this is a copy from uh, Gonzalez book, honestly. This is a standard book, you know that, we have to acknowledge it, it which is being referred for many decades, more than 20, 30 years, still the version is not changed. Ultimately, the process remains same. The process is same, which is having multiple steps of image processing, starting from data acquisition to the final layer. You know that how computer has, computer's operating system has layers or something else, computer network has layers, same way. We also say that image processing has these many steps. So the first step, my name is Dr. Kodeshwaram. Book name is Gonzalez. Yeah. That is very popular book. Very popular, Gonzalez and Woods. Very popular and prominently from last two, three decades. It is the only book available. Afterwards, many people wrote the books. AK Jain and all lot of books came. But this book remained a standard book as a reference for many new learners, new beginners. Anyone uh, starting in the field of image processing, that is uh, like a Bible, we can say, or whatever, any uh, ref reference or whatever. So this is image acquisition, first step. The role played by image acquisition is, again, the crucial. The moment you are capturing, you have sensing devices, you are capturing an image, how you are acquiring the image, how you are acquiring the image, starting is the starting point for image processing. How you are acquiring, are you getting through your camera or different modes or what is the camera, is it a black and white image or a color image or with a high resolution, whatever, that is all coming in uh, different modes. It, it can be webcam, you might have seen in your earlier five, five, six years back, people used to have the webcam nowadays also, but the usage of webcam came down drastically after your uh, smartphones where there is everything. So obviously, there is no specific device like a webcam or something. Cameras anyway, digital cameras started their journey about 20 years back. Now they are also not visible these days. Digital cameras also were replaced by mobile phones. No one is like ca carrying a handy cam, no one is carrying webcam, no one is carrying typical camera, unless otherwise there is something like this. There is no uh, uh, requirement of those devices. So that starts with uh, image acquisition. Once the image is acquired, acquired, you get it, you create an image. Once you have something created or acquired the image, the next role is by processing. Again, image processing starts with image enhancement. Enhancement is, we have seen one example before. That example is uh, mainly from image enhancement perspective. Image enhancement perspective, where you have a small image, for, from that image, you enhance, 
to get something useful information from it what is the purpose of enhancement by enhancing what is that you get it is you get some more information which is useful for your application if you don't enhance you may not get it you may miss some of the crucial data present inside the image you may miss it sometimes you may get it but if there is no processing again enhancement enhanced images are always clearer than the original images so image enhancement is one step the next is image restoration usually when you try to do some process you may miss some of the components any process in the world in the nature when you do something you may miss it so you have to restore back by applying the function restoration functions you get the original component which you miss you know pretty well that image processing is all about sampling and quantization during sampling and quantization process you may miss some of the data some of the important information that information should be retrieved back so that is again retrieved in the sense that that's a different word but however image restoration is also another another important technique as part of your fundamental steps different steps of image processing the next is uh, morphological processing morphological processing is there from last 20 30 years where you see a, a person you have seen in your uh, if you re recollect the first time uh, 20 years back i think 20 no more than that i i really remember the example of uh, uh, indian cinema movie where kamala hasan changes its his uh, face suddenly as a lion or something so they are all uh, typical applications of morphology you change something these days people are using morphing and all that for bad purposes but image morphology is another important uh, step in uh, complete image processing uh, scenario the next is uh, segmentation you know very well to treat an image many a times it may be difficult to process the image as a whole so you divide the image into multiple segments and start working in a specific zone again segmentation so you don't see complete uh, thing when you take a photograph of mine you take first your uh, point is on my face first you won't mostly see outside my shoulder outside this side or that side you see my face first so if you are focusing on my face you have to take you have to focus on only that zone that is you take the segment that segment particular segment divide the image into different parts maybe equal maybe unequal is called as segmentation maybe equal maybe unequal but you are dividing that image into multiple parts for what purpose you want to have more information from that segment you you are interested in some part you are not interested in other part but the moment you segment it you focus on the segment which you are more interested in the next is representation description these are all real time applications where we are looking at whatever applications you are seeing they are all coming under how the images are represented how you are extracting the feature all these are coming under this zone where you are representing the image are you representing as a color feature are you representing it representing it as a texture feature or a shape feature or any layout or anything that is all coming under the next phase so eventually these are all color processing and uh, image compression is another uh, crucial zone in uh, image processing without image compression it is always very difficult to store uh, images that are required from the first step if you have some proper mechanism of compression different compression techniques are there you know very well lot of compression techniques the first and very well reputed uh, compression techniques i remember is jpeg right J jpeg is standard one in 2000 it started is in two, in the year 2000 photo giant photographic expert group started this standard of compressing the data instead of having these many pixels compress it again you apply some different codings of men coding lzw coding different coding techniques and then you compress it so for what purpose you have to compress if you don't compress there is an example how the redundancy plays a vital role a person tells the story with 100 words the same story is told by some other person with 20 words obviously there is a redundancy of 80 words by the first person so you can you can convey the same story with 20 words then you can say that this is more redundant so while while applying the compression technique obviously you will try to remove the redundant pixels you will try to eliminate the redundancy in the whole uh, image so again that is what the image compression there are so many compression techniques these are the reasons 
why the people always focus on image processing being electronics engineers i think most of you are from electronics background if not from computer electronics also uh, computers also this is interdisciplinary it has become so much of uh, interdisciplinary these days not just only people earlier thought that image processing because there is some signal there is some processing there is something else eventually that has become uh, interdisciplinary where you are applying for any domain irrespective of your field of interest it is applicable for whether for electronics or computers these days robotics robotics is also not uh, specific to electronics not is not specific to computer science it is also for uh, mechanical so now we are mixing all your uh, fields and creating some sort of uh, interdisciplinary fields interdisciplinary methods to understand the real time problems next slide please See when you say when you apply uh, one image, okay, how many are rounding off? Like you don't want uh, many pixels. Sometimes you take seventy-five point six. You want to computer cannot take seventy-five point six initially. Most of the things are discrete in nature, digital in nature. You round it off, close it. You round it off instead of taking uh, uh, a complete number you can what i mean to say either zero or one most of the times it is in this image processing sampling and quantization quantization simply refers to the rounding off next play sorry yeah they're all they're all parts like you know including your even pdf also any any format which is used to compress image can be called as a image compression technique it can be jpeg earlier it is jpg or even any PNG format, there are so many formats available, but most of the times we use uh, JPEG. So that's the reason I took the example of JPEG. Yeah, many types of image processing from the basic steps of uh, steps of image processing, you have seen uh, multiple uh, phases of image processing. The first uh, and foremost fundamental steps of image processing. These are the types of image processing. Phases are different again types. So first one is visualization. Find objects that are not visible in the image. That is again a crucial step in uh, image processing. Next is recognition. We have seen pattern recognition the first application. Recognition, distinguish or detect objects in the image. Again, you are detecting uh, as a whole image. In the, if you capture an image like this, you will find myself, you will find some LCD screen. Uh, on displayed here you will find some water bottle you will find some person operating the computer all these are different different objects you can say human beings or faces or anything so these are all called as objects object recognition then sharpening and restoration just now we have seen image enhancement again the sharpening comes into picture sharpening is a part of your enhancement techniques so restoration the moment you do you apply some uh, techniques of image enhancement you miss the data i told you already when you miss the data you try to recover it that is again restoration pattern recognition measures the various patterns around the objects in the image there are so many applications of pattern recognition these days you have seen multiple examples of pattern recognitions next is sharpening is an image processing technique basically image enhancement technique which is again to make the image more clearer more clearer yeah the next is uh, retrieval retrieval again when you have lot of images lot of images every day every moment you are creating bundles of volumes of images every day when you are creating multiple volumes like this huge amounts of images how these images are retrievable how you are creating that image is not uh, important here how you are using the image is an important thing when you take uh, standard data sets people have developed different data sets in the past so multiple data sets with thousand coral or something something like that but coral data is a uh, gone long back now people are using bag of words huge millions of data millions image net image net is the perfect example where you have millions of images but how these many images can be retrieved from the database what is the purpose of database suppose you have uh, an image of a breast cancer image 
so mammography image is there how how that images are relevant to the past diagnosed patients so this will really help the doctor to identify the diagnosis the, the identify the problem accordingly to plan the treatment which is again the major role player so image retrieval will help us mainly to identify the similar images from the database simple with this is like an offline process earlier now it has become online as well suppose there are 1 million images and you want to find who is myself the moment you give my image the google or the any search engines should fetch my image similar image to you and show that yes this person is that what you are looking for based on the input that you give it to the system that input may be a texture feature the input may be a color feature that input may be a shape feature you give sorry yes google is an example these days when we started up this image process image retrieval long back people used to say can i say can i check that in online and all earlier it was not online but these days it is online earlier it was fully offline is that the approximate image sorry is that approximate mostly mostly that all depends on how much uh, the features that you are extracting suppose if your features are very close if you combine multiple features people earlier said that okay only take color is color so color composition may be rgb composition may be in two images but the the two images are completely different you take a nature image and i am coated with different colors so it it measures the number of um, quantity of colors and says that both of them are equal but in fact they are not so the closeness how much is accurate depends on how many features that you are extracting how many extracting i mean sorry extracting and how much training that you are giving to computer it should facilitate your system to identify the features only texture feature sometimes serves the purpose sometimes both color and texture sometimes all three but obviously there is a limitation you cannot combine multiple features and which makes your feature vector more lengthy more complex feature vector so to identify how much is the close how much is that image that you are looking for is close like it all depends on what is the effective feature extraction method that you are following is your feature extraction method is very very uh, close to the required image or not suppose you don't identify some features obviously some of the features are lost instead of getting male image sometimes you may get a female image instead of getting animal image you may get a human image sometimes to get it you get a nature image that all depends on how much is the uh, quantity of feature extraction or feature vector we call it as a feature vector uh, also one more thing is when you say that your system of uh, image retrieval is very effective that all depends on how much image how many images that your system can work on if you say that my system is uh, uh, capa is capable of extracting one image from 1000 database that is not sufficient these days you say you take a bag of words you take image net where there are more than millions of image out of millions of images only you should get extract you should extract the uh, more relevant images if not exact re replica sometimes relevant boss you have asked for this image but i am sharing i am giving you this many images on the on the on the rank of uh, the similarity you can say that uh, similarity vector you measure it and based on your calculations precision recall methods you extract that one by one and give it flash it on the screen you have asked for this person's image similar to this person there are these are the 10 images there are 20 images these are the 100 images like you google you see it first it gives you more relevant pages then slowly it goes with which is completely not relevant completely not relevant after some time if you go to next page next page you won't find anything this is all rubbish first page only more relevant so that happens based on the ranking that you give it as per the similar distance similarity distance you know that how the similarity distance euclidean distance uh, d2 distance different distance matrix to compare two feature vectors because ultimately image is always represented by means of a feature so when you are taking two features two vectors what is the difference between these two vectors decides the similarity of image yes, sir. yeah uh, how do you define technically pattern like you said pattern recognition so how do you define pattern technically, technically uh, there is no specific uh, definition we can say it's a pattern so I, in my in my understanding of image processing i always see the pattern as a combination of zeros and ones first 
and how they are arranged is for different uh, again uh, there is no st uh, standard definition for a pattern this is arrangement occurrence of zeros and ones in series or may not be in series yeah Yes, retina scan also, this is iris, we call it as iris, iris recognition has become popular, that is again the one of the applications of computer vision these days, the iris is taken, it is taken in your database, retrieve the database, whenever you are in front of the camera, take the present uh, scenario, present uh, iris and then compare, that happens with less than fraction of seconds. So earlier people used to take, uh, the system used to take much time. But nowadays the time to take the data, process the data, give the result is almost nothing. Less than second, something two seconds are very quickly it is happening. But inside again the comparison of data, comparison of feature vector is happening. The next is uh, benefits of image processing. The digital image can be made available in any desired format, improved image, x-ray, photo negative, etc. It helps to improve image for human interpretation. How you are seeing the image? How I am seeing image? You are seeing that there is a bird in it. If you say the cloud, people like, people say cloud. Always say that I can see the bird in the cloud, in the cloud formation. Someone say no, I am seeing line. Someone say I am seeing some water. This is all interpretation. Person's interpretation is different. Computer interpretation is different. Computer sees it in a very clear way. As per your input, computer never assumes anything. Someone say system mistakes, it never happens. We should not say, being a technical te technocrats, we should never say that computer mistake. Computer can never make a mistake. Especially when there are results, when there are some data, something, we simply throw the blame on computer, say that computer mistake. But it never happens. Whatever you say, whatever you do, that only computer takes and process it. It can be image, it can be data. So obviously, when human interpretation is different, when you see, what you see is different, what computer sees is different. That is again dependent on how you are training your computer. What is that input you are giving? So that is the reason when you start your learning of computer, important components of computer you start with input device, output device, monitor, CPU like this. So there is a significant role played by the input that you are giving to the computer to process your images. So that is, uh, uh, it helps to improve image for interpretation. Information can be processed and extracted from images uh, for machine interpretation, that's what it is, machine interpretation. Machine is like your computer, whatever you say, it interprets. If you say that, no, this person is not a human being, this person is an animal, if you say, feed my, my image and try in your computer, no, this is not a person, this is something else. So computer also feels that you are not an image. So that's where the information can be processed and extracted from images for machine interpretation. The pixels in the image can be manipulated to any desired density and contrast. Again, there are so many words in image processing. As I told you in the beginning, people say that image processing is outdated, but still there is a lot to learn. So there are multiple words which can always help us to learn more and more every day. You define contrast, you define something, you define color, you define a lot of words in image processing which have still, still are, which are undergoing still a lot of uh, changes. In the, in the perception. So here, the, the pixels in the image can be manipulated to any desired density and contrast. That, that's where it is. Image manipulation. You take uh, image processing, then you are making image restoration or image morphology or something. These days, many techniques have come. Many techniques. How you manipulate. How you manipulate. You take zooming, you, you take interpolation, you take any technique to manipulate the image, to create a new image, Two images can be combined and you know that. So two images can be combined, you can show it as a one image. So a lot of manipulations are possible if you can play with the pixels present in the image. The next is it allows for easy electronic transmission of image to third party providers. Obviously when you apply different techniques of uh, image compression or any other modes, you can always send earlier to send one image. We have seen during our childhood how much time it used to take to transmit an image from one system to other system. Forget about email, but from one system to other system itself, it used to take a lot of time to transmit. To see the image slowly, it comes like it, it arranges everything and then it takes some time to come on the screen. So a lot of uh, improvement have taken place in this uh, image processing. So these are certain applications, these are benefits of image processing. Next slide, please. Snacks, uh, no, I will not take it. Just finish. Thank you. Let's take one piece, sir. 
No, it's okay. Yes, I'm a teacher. You are also teacher. No problem. Yeah. So person to person, the color will be changed. Yeah. 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 Yeah
these days most likely we are not even seeing so whatever may be reasons when i was in uk i used to think like many times and when i came back for, i stayed there for five years came back from in uh, uk that time also I, i never used to carry cash every time my family members used to say if you go to a chicken shop how will you get chicken there is no money so that has uh, come to reality i really uh, recollect those days they my my family members used to say i say no i don't want cash no, I so i how will you bring that i say that i will use only card so i'm really i'm not uh, interested to go to atm and withdraw that's my by default my nature when uh, that has happened every time they used to comment like if you go to a shop mutton shop or chicken shop if there is no card what you will do <laughs> nothing <laughs> you'll ask for uh, some um, loan you'll say that i'll pay it later <laughs> but uh, that that is now has become your phone pay your paytm lot of uh, uh, apps came and people are continuously developing lot many apps every whatsapp also started your uh, everybody is starting that digital uh, payments so this this is again the uh, biggest transformation that took place okay next slide please yeah that's what my friend explained me while coming data data is the new oil it's only useful when it's refined so that's where the crucial application comes into picture data is huge 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 people are saying that i am a data scientist i am a data science specialist how can you say that tomorrow tomorrow coming one two years if we don't uh, uh, turn towards data science we don't turn to machine learning or data uh, whatever applications you can't say that i am an electronics engineer so we are dead electronics engineers are going to die if you don't change yourself now the need of the hour maybe not regularly maybe after two years again the electronics and uh, communication or related fields may bounce back we never know well previous 5 years back electronics and communication was the most preferred branch till 5 years till 4 years it was the highest preferred but these days last 4 years we are seeing the drastic uh, fall in the uh, students selections and also when if you are a faculty if you say that uh, i am electronics they say no we don't want we want computer science <laughs> so this is one so now this that requirement has come into even if you are electronics engineer you can still work for data science you can still work for machine learning you can still work for ai there is no barrier there is no barricade between you and a computer science you can always become a data science specialist all that you need is what is the data science what is the need for data science and what are the tools of data processing so here data is the new oil it is only useful when you refine it further continuously lot of data is there you say that in future you require lot of garbage is there in data and demand will be there if you clean the data if you can segregate the data if you can separate the data no this data is not useful this is outdated remove the data filter out like like you clean your uh, memory in your because in the future as the data is increasing as the data is increasing it's not easy to create the memory devices to meet the requirements of the data so data is being created every second every micro level but how the data is is going to how many memory devices you can create so obviously there is some point you segregate the data yes this data is not useful this data is useful use this data separate it like a uh, you take a wet one and dry one likewise in future we look for someone who is specialized in data processing otherwise it becomes biggest garbage in the world next please yeah learn from experience learn from data follow instructions this is what the requirement today so you learn from first one is you say if it is a human being you say that it's a learn from experience so you say that every time we say to our students and family learn from previous experience earlier you failed you understand earlier you did this go and gain from it if you if it is obviously the data is there the system should learn from the data itself nothing else there is nothing else that you can make the system learn obviously you have to give the data you keep on giving the data to it and it learns how much is the data useful is again a different question but at the same time you should also have the data and based on the data it should know 
the moment you say that these days you, you say the moment you switch on when I when I start my car at my home it says that are you going to KL University you are 40 minutes away you are 35 minutes away so it, it has some past experience every day traveling with me my system is traveling with me obviously it has the data with it based on the data it is gaining the experience so then next is follow instructions obviously once you know something then you follow no, no, you, if you move this side, it shows that there is a valley. If you move front, there is a road. So obviously that is an experience. Based on that, the system should follow. Next, please. Yeah, this is what the broader, broader perspective of uh, artificial intelligence, deep learning, and then uh, machine learning. Deep learning, machine learning, artificial intelligence, you can say the uh, a broader, a simple, simple sentence. I am not going to make it more complicated more complicated very simple sense very simple sense as a layman sense simple thing is a technique which enables machines to mimic human behavior is simply the artificial intelligence artificial intelligence so that is simplest example that uh, statement that you can say what is that because this is the most commonly coming into our mind every time what is people always talking what is artificial intelligence more of most of them are looking similar Artificial intelligence, sometimes they say uh, ML is also same. Sometimes we to offer our BTEC courses, we say CSEI. Sometimes we to offer more seats, we say CSE ML. When parents ask us, you say both of them are same. Very commonly. So you say that very commonly, you say that no, no, both of them are CSEA is same, CSE ML is same, CSE data science also same. So that's where you should have a demarcation about how how this uh, uh, AI and how this data science, um, data uh, deep learning, how this machine learning is different from. So machine learning, you see that subset of AI techniques which use statistical methods to enable machines to improve with experience. Most of your uh, uh, machine learning methods are based on your statistics, stats. So that's why to become, I always say, to make, uh, to become a uh, data scientist, to become uh, AI, to become something specialized, machine ML expert, you don't need to be a B.Tech computer science guy at all. You can be a B.Tech mechanical guy, you can become a B.Com guy, B.Sc guy, B.Sc maths guy, or an ordinary, no B.Com guy, no intermediate guy also. But the only thing is you should have some command on statistics. So obviously if you have a statistics and grip on statistics, all statistics you apply, you become ML expert. Tomorrow ML engineers are nowhere born from uh, heaven. They are here and we are there and any, any specialized, any person can become ML expert. The next comes is uh, deep learning, subset of ML. You see the, the flow here, the beauty here is how the broader thing is as an AI and in it again you call it a subset of AI techniques which use statistical methods to enable machines to improve the performance. Again, subset of ML techniques, subset of ML which make the computation of multi-layer neural networks possible. Again, when you say that uh, human brain resembles, right, having a lot of neurons, it's a big neural networks, billions neurons are there, all neurons, people say that the moment your neurons Come low, do, uh, come low, come down, you are becoming old or you are becoming memory less. Obviously, the neurons play a vital role. If there is no chemical balance in your brain. Obviously, the chemical imbalance will make your neurons die. The moment the neurons come down, your memory is lost. So, automatically again, the neurons are playing the role, big role in case of your deep learning. Learning, learning requires memory. Again, for this, you require some multi-layer neural networks. It can be different techniques. I will not get into those ANN, CNN, RNN, all those neural net networks techniques. Ultimately, the purpose of this is for making the system learn on different layers, from different layers. You take any, any deep learning technique, it is all about neural networks. How you are training with the neurons, neurals. Next is the data science. Now again, another fancy buzzword these days is data science. What is this data science? You see, maths and statistics, visualization and other techniques, here it is all what we have seen. Okay? If you combine all together, you call it as a data science. These days, people say that data science has become more significant and that's the reason 
people of uh, you know even uh, they are not looking at btech these days usman university i think you are affiliated to usman university usman university is starting bsc data science in future you don't need to expect people who can study uh, btech in uh, data science you can simply say that i i tell my students someone says that no i am very much fascinated about data science i want to become data science I, then i say don't join btech you join usman university bsc happily you get it 3 years and ultimately you will be called as a data scientist and you can start your career anywhere in the world as a data scientist why to waste 4 years why you are so crazy about uh, i am not against computer science being electronics professor i am always biased towards electronics obviously uh, so so i am i am little hesitant to tell sometimes that uh, you can learn electronics outside but i am always there on the front row to tell that you can learn data science not necessarily to come to the campus also you can learn it at youtube you can learn it with friends you can learn learn with from friends kids also anyone you can learn so there is no there is no restriction that you to become a data scientist you should learn uh, huge mathematics with the basic of uh, minimum knowledge on this you can become data scientist yeah this is again uh, the manufacturing for handling robots drones industry 4.0 these are people are talking about industry 4.0 4.0 again people are saying now these days uh, industry 5.0 also so we don't know <laughs> what's happening with 4.0 people have started 4.0 before they completed 4.0 we are talking about 5.0 same way as 5g and 6g we are not even rolled in india still people government says that we have started uh, uh, 5g and of course we are fortunate that hyderabad is one of the five cities to start this uh, uh, 5g deployment hopefully once that 5g is deployed due to the initiatives go from government we definitely get uh, the requirement of uh, professionals who can deal with uh, 5g we can deal with data science we can deal with uh, all this electronics and computer science uh, related technologies will be coming up very soon maybe after 2 years once the 5g come into reality in india forget about 6g but for first 5g once 5g is there obviously there is a requirement of data scientist there is a requirement of ml scientist there is lot of uh, requirement that is again anticipated within 6 months to 1 year once that uh, uh, 5g is deployed in our country that so we should be very thankful to the, to the government of india for selecting hyderabad after bengaluru chennai kolkata and mumbai and this is a great achievement actually for hyderabad people Uh, the government has recognized as uh, this city as a metro city like bengaluru and hyderabad again here a ml dl what is the different uh, manufacturing zones automotive zone people are talking about self driving cars we have seen in videos multiple videos shared by our friends in us or somewhere tesla whatever you call it you call it as people have seen i've seen many videos people sharing that i'm say hey, i'm sitting in driverless car look i'm starting my car at my home it is taking me to my office i'm sleeping now i'm enjoying i'm taking puff or i'm taking some uh, burger or something so that's where the automotive industry is uh, taking care of the looking at these applications uh, self driving cars smart dashboards vehicle control systems finance loan distribution using ai models pos handling and of course these days uh, the uh, vending machines everything like your swiping machines i mean to say swiping machines pos and uh, pos means point of sales right yeah. something like that the next is loan distribution using ai models the next is the manufacturing for uh, handling robots don't i finished media entertainment and telecom you can say that for handling compressed data transfer advanced data management 5g plus ai that's what i was talking about 5G plus AI for uh, data transmission. People say that buffering will not be there. Your YouTube video, video you can watch without any buffering, without any wasting time. You can download the video with a huge amount of data also, which is very faster, 10 times faster than the 4G now. People are telling that 5G. Once 5G comes into picture, again you require AI specialist. <coughs> the next is energy for smart energy monitoring, smart home, smart city. Again, the moment the moment you say that is a smart, it is everything. Uh, people have uh, we have seen one thing uh, in 2008 uh, one of this i don't want to name here nearby gachibal they said we are going to provide intelligent living we are going to provide uh, smart living they started about uh, 2008 now this is 2020 not completed <laughs> i don't want to name that many of you might be knowing it 
so that's where i've seen that i'm moving passing every time every time i pity those who have bought it maybe for last uh, 14 years they are struggling 14 years they are on they said that in 2008 will bring smart living will bring will bring intelligent living you don't need to knock the door you don't need to open the door you don't need to do anything you just automatically lock everything but unfortunately i could not see anything i'm uh, sometimes i I'm, i feel curious to ask some of them who bought it 2008 and lost lot of money there so smart living is again now coming into picture due to the amalgamation of different techniques coming from ai ml and dl next please yeah this is what the comparison how you compare a human vision and a computer vision system a human vision system and a computer you see that there is a input as i told you in the beginning you can always give the input to the computer you can always give the computer the moment you give the input obviously it has to understand what is that you are expecting from so input is your banana whatever there in the input side and if it is a human being you can say that the moment you give it to me this you say that this is a bottle i can see this a rock star okay this because i am facing i am seeing it i can with my knowledge there already i have my neurons i have my learning method a system there i can see that there is a bisleri there is a rock star and seven rupees so the moment i give it as a input this is what the example there so something there i keep it and my eyes are seeing and my brain is proce uh, processing it and then it is giving that yes you are seeing bananas grapes and berry same thing i my my eyes is uh, my eyes are scanning here and saying that this you you are holding a bottle of the manufactured by so and so and it is clear same way when you take a computer computer also should have some inputs and those inputs are like this in place of my eyes in place of my eyes there is a camera yes there is a camera so there is a scanner there is a camera whatever camera is whatever it, it is getting it then in place of my brain there is a processor or a computer then again output is same so you can interpret what is the computer vision system that's the reason why we say that a computer vision perspective deep learning method with a computer vision perspective so how the computer is seeing it how the human being are seeing how the computer is seeing what is the vision what is the human vision there and computer vision down so computer vision is all about eyes are replaced by your camera and again your computer is similar to analogous to your brain you take a humanoid robot please remember earlier there was no humanoid people said only robot sophia yeah sophia sophia yeah sophia so earlier uh, the there was no humanoid the combination of vision combination of intelligence became regular human uh, regular robot became humanoid these days you are seeing many the uh, i think uh, prince of uh, saudi or someone walking with uh, uh, a robot in airport you might have seen a big robot with a uh, lot of cameras fit into it weapons in it lot of things walk around walk uh, walking along with the princess the prince there so there whatever i've seen some some videos so all those are again dependent on how you are seeing how it is able to walk exactly uh, there is a follower if it is a drone also if anything there is always a role for uh, a vision computer vision next please we yeah. up computer vision basic function this is the computer vision basic function where you can see optical character recognition so you have seen ocr lot of people are working lot of people are working including uh, my guide uh, professor pratap reddy sir also started working on uh, ocr optical character recognition they developed lot of uh, language they took the languages hindi devanagari script and then they have taken recently they are starting working on urdu language they are talking on uh, telugu language and they are talking on multiple languages character recognition how this recognition can help the computer to understand so what is the language that you are using on the paper so that is where ocr so lot of a lot of that is a big ocean where you cannot cover it in one or two sentences ocr optical character recognition then very simple example of ocr is your check realization when you submit a check in your bank bank realizes bank follows this ocr simple it has some code there then it it understands that there is some code and based on that it it processes the data next is uh, retail automation 
retail automation where you you have seen lot of applications where you you are not even seeing you just say that uh, you take ticket select it and get it everything is automated you don't need to go and see physically and you can uh, get most of the things automated way there the next is machine inspection 3d model building medical imaging match movie mo match move and then uh, motion capture surveillance automotive safety fingerprint recognition and biometrics these are all computer vision basic functions all you take you give your biometric you give your iris you give anything or coming under computer vision basic computer can see you computer is seeing you with different uh, uh, factors different parameters different inputs next slide please yeah this is the again the classification of ml and dl classification i mean to say rather than classification illustration of how you say how you see the machine learning how you see that uh, uh, deep learning so deep learning there is no machine uh, there is no manual intervention to process the feature extraction in deep learning it is done by the machine itself so it is done by the machine itself in deep learning if it is in uh, machine learning there is a person processing extracting the features features are extracted by the human intervention there and here there is no human intervention of course the classification are same there here the steps are same feature extraction classification there and here but at the same time feature extraction classification are combined here and you are calling that as deep learning in multiple layers there are multiple layers layer below one layer layer you know that how that uh, memory comes how the uh, uh, system is built with multiple layers so this is uh, again uh, you can say that input is given there and it says that car is whether it's a car is not car or not car or not car you, you you have to tell the system you are giving the input as this whether it's a car or it's not a car so for this there is lot of things to elaborate first thing is you need to extract the features for car features are you are you getting the features by means of a color by means of a texture of a car by means of the shape of the car based on the all these three features then you can say yes this is what it is so this feature extraction again is a very 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 big role player very big role player what is that algorithms so what are the feature extraction algorithms so based on the algorithm that you employ based on the algorithm that algorithm that you deploy the efficiency of the system is working if the system if you are if your feature extraction is effective and efficient obviously the output is going to be very much effective very much perfect next one please yeah again now people are talking about ar and vr lot of uh, works are going on again ar and vr is computer vision so this is again a computer vision perspective where you can see that overlays computer generated 3d content on the real world that is augmented reality virtual reality people are talking for last 5 6 years due to covid time it has gone up like anything you say that you are in india you can watch some uh, uh, something in lab in us or you can see how the space station walking all these are now people are saying that hospital arrangements you can see how many hospitals are occupied sitting at your home you can say that, that there is an hospital aims is there nims is there you can see that how many beds are occupied so lot of uh, applications of ar and vr is also in line these days so again this is again uh, in the perspective of uh, computer vision again this is a computer vision perspective if you see that it is achieved by smartphones tablets or ar wearables it is achieved by vr headsets people is you know that you like uh, there are we have lab there in our uh, uh, university there where you can create a virtual environment complete virtual environment you just wear the it set and you feel like you are in something earlier you used to see that 3d movies and all are long back in your childhood you say that 3d you you you, you are given some uh, specs and then you get it you go to the, again that is also linked to your vision so obviously uh, how the vision has become virtual how it is augmented reality these are the main classifications like what is the augmented reality versus uh, virtual reality completely shut down the real world and make user think that they are really in the virtual world that is virtual completely shut down the existing world whereas it is able to interact with the real world and virtual world both that is what augmented reality augmented reality is something different vr is something different both looks uh, similar 
but there is a difference one is completely shutting down other one is combining both real and there is no person i am going and giving shaking hand other person is not there but i can give shaking that is augmented so same same way like you, you assume that there is no one there but uh, people say the earlier people used to say whom with whom he is talking nowadays you are talking and it has become earlier people say if someone is talking without anyone people used to feel that is mad they gone mad now this has become reality why machine learning now why machine learning now you see this these are all the different zones connected data what is the data how much Uh, data is every day every moment every month every year how much of data coming in you know that cloud has again came into picture my professors there working on cloud deployment how the cloud is combined so there is nothing like as i told you earlier there is nothing like cloud is computer science there is nothing like data is computer science there is nothing like uh, ml is computer science it can be for from anyone anyone can do it so cloud the data science job purpose or whatever then again algorithms open source and democ democratized these days people are working on uh, open source rather than going for a typical uh, american companies you start your own open source when we say something we always look for what is the open source alternative we always see as, as it's not about the money saving scheme but tomorrow when you grow bigger and bigger you cannot depend depend you cannot be dependent on proprietary software anymore as a as an engineer to use your knowledge to the society you should also develop some of the uh, real time applications some some sometimes instead of depending on uh, existing or uh, monopolized uh, tools which you can buy only by paying money dollars and all instead of it can you do something to develop on your own or which is an open source which is not a copyrighted rather it is a copy left people always say that you know that there is always a copyright on other side there is a copy left so you you should always go for something which is left there is no nothing right it is not right copyright is should be avoided as long as if you can develop some of the open source tools like this open source and democratized the next is access to cheap abundant storage internet of things iot people have already seen the uh, io internet of everything now uh, again internet of uh, uh, things is also people say that is internet of things is outdated but still a lot of things will come in future with iot once you once you deploy your 5g or other things again iot also will boom up like anything internet of things internet of everything you know that ioe there is one thing called as ioe then iot so how many devices that you are able to connect how many more devices you are able to connect is it only 10 devices you can connect is it only 5 devices or how you are going to connect beyond and beyond what is learning problem so learning is improving with experience at some task improve the these are all examples chess game while well, while coming we were discussing chess game how you make this uh, the system play these days players we have some Uh, international player with us in our university so there uh, he, he never goes to someone opponent like he doesn't need to go to russia to play with someone who is expertise you play with system there is system checker any games chess game or any game you more more uh, steps there that are feeded that are fed into the uh, system automatically more intelligent it is so that is again it need not to be a uh, vishwanathan's brain it can be someone multiple vishwanathans coming in and uh, giving the steps one by one one by one makes the system more intelligent that's where more check you can see this this is a game learn to play checkers play checkers percentage of games won in world tournament opportunity to, to play against self so these day systems are thinking what is the next step you are going to play with your system because of the intelligence you move the one one thing here automatically the system understand that yes you are going to move in this direction so this is where the significance of learning whether it is a deep learning or a machine learning the learning problem is like this more training more training more uh, effective inputs make the system more learned well posed learning problem so when you say that definition a computer program is said to be learned from experience e with respect to some class of task t and performance p p t and e how all of them are related all of them are related you see this to have a well defined learning problem 
three features need to be identified the class of tasks what is the ta uh, class of task the measure of performance to be improved the source of experience so these three roles these three parts will definitely explain what is the uh, learning and what is the experience what is the task and what is the performance all are interlinked you know that how much you are learning how much you are performing what is the task given to you this again your real example of your chess board uh, international players of chess these days are just competing themselves among themselves um, with them itself vishnuvardhan anand is playing with vishnuvardhan anand with uh, with computer so some some world class players are playing on the system by means of the developed mechanism like this next please the checker learning problem this is again uh, we will demonstrate it i'm just give me 2 minutes yeah a handwriting recognition learning problem a robot driving learning problem checker checker uh, learning problem these are all some of the examples of your uh, deep learning so these are the uh, regularly known examples like your chess board like a, a handwriting recognition learning problem you are writing something who is writing what is it? we have seen that different phases of your uh, deep learning that's one thing a robot driving learning problem task as a to as we have seen there are task is there and then uh, experience is there and then performance all three are always there in any problem of given deep learning any given le given deep learning will have these three like one is first one task what is a task what is the experience and what is the performance experience in the sense again the training comes into picture whenever you take a deep learning system how much you are training what is the samples that you are training what is the algorithm that you are using to train your system deep learning algorithm there are so many if you say a neural networks so for example if i say i am using a cnn if i say i am using rnn or what is that rnn what is that cnn and uh, how that algorithm is designed or developed that's the reason why people keep on developing cnn some again some more some more some more people are talking about a small amount of cnn is being developed rnn is developed rnn anyway recurrent neural networks but most of the times cnn is deep neural networks uh, cnns multiple algorithms are coming up in cnn making the systems learning more and more and more effective more effective in the sense more how much closer to your expectations how much closer you are designing your system to be effective <coughs> next please steps in designing a learning system you see this choosing the training experience choosing the target function representation of the target function choosing a function approximation algorithm there are two types of again estimate estimating training values adjusting the weights final design these are the broader steps maybe you can again classify them into multiple steps there but again here these five steps are very common in any deep learning system any deep learning system these are the five steps the next please yeah no do not visible you can just see that research workflow for problem solving using deep learning research workflow suppose you are working in some research domain to towards your towards your phd or some postdoc fellowship you can always think in this direction most of you suppose if you are coming from teaching teaching fraternity in future you may be interested in working in deep learning and in, of course in computer perspective computer vision perspective obviously you can think of these uh, steps first one is what is the problem identification related to your deep learning i am talking very specific very pertaining to the deep learning so problem identification data acquisition and annotation with domain expert annotation again expert is different suppose you say that annotation as in the beginning itself i told how you see how you are annotating very old times if i if i give some image to some person annotators annotators used to annotate an image with a bird and some water some tree annotators one annotator uh, represent that as a bird someone represent that as a tree someone represent the water so that all depends on the annotator's perception so you see this data acquisition and annotation with the domain expert the next is selection of deep learning technique we have seen different deep learning techniques then model architecture design then hyper parameter tuning and uh, selection result validation with domain expert again 
when you say that the parameters obviously whenever you have multiple parameters how you are tuning the parameters everywhere you go across you go to electronics you go to computer science you go to mechanical you go to chemical engineering you go to any field when you have a parameters how you are tuning the parameters decides the performance of system parameters how you are parameters so you say that there is a parameter called this pass percentage so that pass percentage is a parameter to decide the performance of the student also the performance of the faculty you are using it suppose you want to terminate a faculty you use that pass percentage as a factor you simply say that no no your performance is not good your pass percentage is low same same parameter you are using to assess the performance of a student you say that yes you got 90 percentage in your academics you are good so the same performance you are treating that same par parameter in different zone so there again parameter tuning hyper parameter tuning and selection which parameter you are selecting how what is the parameters that you are taking and then what is the parameter that you are selecting to design your thing i am just telling that example but for real deep learning systems use these problems in research oriented not necessarily for a regular phd it can be for anyone tomorrow when some students or some friends approach you then you should be able to tell yes this is what the broad perspective how to understand the problem starting from the problem identification data acquisition annotation all this percolate down to the result validation with domain expert all results cannot be validated unless otherwise you say yes this is validated you can't say that so validation is again very common and prominent step in any system if you say that 70% my student got some university should validate it yes the 70% is equivalent to distinction so obviously whenever any system is designed that for that validation you take it with a domain expert so any validation validation is the last step once you get everything once you get your results out then it should be validated to make your design complete i think that's over yeah class label cats you see that uh, dogs the biggest problem is most of the times cats and dogs look similar obviously computer uh, should be trained in such a way that based on your feature based on other parameters you should be able to train your computer make the system learn which is a dog which is a cat obviously features matters there features how many features what effective features that you are using is same see see that you can this uh, obviously uh, depends on the feature selection and training how much you are training with the various factors that we have discussed in the previous slide next one please yeah here you see this cat and uh, can you make when you when you go to a specific object again so when you are dividing that instead of focusing on complete image are you keeping it in a box right you see this again you are going to the object in first one is simple class you take that image then classification because you are taking it to cat cat and dog you classify that first one take cat then again classification plus localization for localization purpose you know anyway you will focus it in a specific box there again you go to cat dog duck all in the same image you are going in a specific object based again now object detection you are detecting object by object you are not combining everything then finally instance segmentation once you are there you can see that then you are going for segmentation you are separating that the last one right that is what cat dog duck multiple objects are there if it is only one dog single object it is fine but if it multiple objects how much boxes that you can draw object detection again so if you see left side is a single object right side is a multiple object and classification per lo plus localization object detection and then image segmentation it is with the uh, multiple objects next one please done yeah so uh, this is uh, the deep learning with uh, computer vision perspective if, if uh, i i request my friend there my colleague there to demonstrate one ex one uh, real time example real time uh, applications it can be a uh, hands on something like that yeah professor in the department of e ec kl university hyderabad so uh, today i will demonstrate the as we have seen the example of handwritten digit so these all started 
in the year of 1998 uh, before the uh, year of 2000 uh, internet banking was not popular and the particular in the US market people uh, frequently use the checks and in the checks as we are uh, all aware that uh, US having the citizen from many countries so writing of different persons from the different countries are different so they are writing in the different style in the check and uh, the bank the bank related person finding difficulty to recognize the digits and as this is the financial transaction so accuracy matters a lot so from there the handwritten digit recognition task starts and uh, it is started with the professor Jan Likun who is currently chief in charge of AI in the Facebook meta so the Jan Likun was the postdoctoral student of Jaff Hinton Jaff Hinton is the godfather of AI the all algorithm we are seeing today whether it is neural network whether it is convolution neural network it designed and developed by the Jaff Hinton so today we will recognize the handwritten digits using the convolution neural network so hope you are aware of CNN if you are not then while coding we will learn these things so the important part is that as sir has already mentioned the advantage of deep learning and machine learning that it is the open source so we will use one open source language that is the python what is the utilization of open source what is the app advantage of open source language that many developers are developing a particular thing like we can say that android and ios android is a open source we can see many functionalities are there ios is governed by the one company that is apple similarly we are seeing two kind of tools for the deep learning and machine learning one is the python one is the matlab matlab is governed by the company you have to purchase that particular tool or rather a complete tool and there are certain kind of developers so growth is limited where is the python is the open source free of cost easy to install and continuous development going on and from the user perspective we get too much help as you all aware of that stack overflow stack exchange github we can easily get the pre-built codes we can easily get the error checking the error solution so our main focus will be target on the mathematics or our problem statement or modification fine so that's why we will use the python another important point is that as the machine learning or deep learning these are the layered architecture neural network architecture so if we going to write each and everything by ourselves code will be lengthy and we will stuck on writing in the code so to get rid of this there are two pop popular high level libraries are available i want to give one topology one is the machine language what is machine language zeros and one high and low zero voltage and five voltage but we are not aware but we are not writing our coding in this we are writing coding in c or c plus plus and that is converted into machine language so we should not think about the voltage levels we only think about the syntax okay one is the embedded programming language we have seen in the microprocessor we have to think about the registers move a comma b register a should be 8 bit register b should be 8 bit again think of memory and after that we have developed the embedded c where we have to not think about anything similarly one is the python and in the python google has developed one deep learning library that is called the tensorflow and another one is the keras so tensorflow and keras are the two library which having too much inbuilt functions so you can use that one and focus on your model architecture building so that you can focus on your main target do not stuck into the coding and why to use tensorflow and keras because it is backed by the google if some special library is backed by a good company a big company a fortune 100 company so that continuation evaluation will be there there will be problem solving community will be there there will be continuous growth like before some year there were two popular library Tiano and TensorFlow Tiano is backed by the University of Montreal because it is backed by the Montreal University of Montreal one university so there are not too much financial resources are available so now they are unable to develop that continuous thing nowadays 
frequently used library is the TensorFlow and Keras. Okay, there is a global certification also available. Global TensorFlow Developer Certification. Fine. So, so today we will use the TensorFlow and Keras library for the hand written digit recognition, and these two libraries are written in the Python. So our task will be today. Using the Keras deep learning library, using the TensorFlow deep learning library, we have to characterize the handwritten digits. Fine. So, one thing is important here. What is artificial intelligence? As sir rightly said, mimicking the human brain. And what is the human brain? What is the human thinking? Dividing a big task into the small task. So, recognizing a handwritten, let's say I have written 1 trillion, I have written 2 trillion, Recon recognizing that thing is a complex job. Why not divide our task into a small parts? So, we are using, generally in throughout the world, we are using the Arabic numbers, 0 to 9. So, if I train my model to recognize 0 to 9, there will be no other class labels infinite or any big number you say that will constitutes of a number from 0 to 9. So to train individual number it's different. Why not train only with class level 0 to 9? If I make a classifier to classify 10 classes that is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If I model know how to classify 0 to 9 then whatever you number give me I can recognize because that will be combination of 0 to 9 big task divided into small task so now what is my task recognizing the 0 to 9 that means 10 classes using the keras and tensorflow so important part is that as sir rightly said what is the difference between machine learning and deep learning machine learning we have to extract feature by ourselves deep learning our algorithm extracting the features okay so recognizing 6 and 9 may be easy for us. Recognizing the cancerous and uh, non-cancerous image, difficult for us. Rather, we can say that impossible. Why? Because we don't have a domain knowledge. What we will do? Again, we will call, contact radiologist. Again, we will contact clinicians. So, this process is difficult. Think about satellite images, weather forecast prediction, some kind of different no domain knowledge is there, a stock market prediction, some kind of financial knowledge is there. So, feature extraction by human is a difficult task. And why we are developing this technology? To reduce the human effort. In one way, we are saying that we have to reduce the human method, human effort, and again we are using the human method, human efforts. So, what is the solution? Deep learning is the solution. Prepare an architecture in that way that Propose a methodology in that way that it is recognized the features by their own. That is the deep learning. So here, what is our task? So I am focusing on my task. Initially, task was to solve the banker's problem, handwritten written uh, hand written digit recognition. Second is the too much coding. So we have solved the problem by using the Keras and TensorFlow. Third one is the how I, how I, I can train my data because there are infinite numbers are there. No need to train for infinite numbers. Only train for 0 to 9. I am reducing the difficulty. Now, what is the next difficulty? How to extract the feature? Fine. 6 can be written in many ways in different ways. A kid is write 6 in different way. A elder person write in different way. Even a pen shape is dependent. If you write by pilot pen, ink pen, shapes will be different. So, how to reduce? Using the deep learning. Prepare an architecture in that way so that your model extract the feature, not you. Fine. So, this architecture is popularly known as convolution neural network. If you don't know the convolution neural network, again I will reduce the difficulty. Convolution neural network is a combination of convolution plus neural network. CNN, C plus NN. So, what is neural network? Neural networks mimic the human brain. Fine. What is the convolution? If we don't know CNN, but for sure we know the convolution. What is the convolution? Product of two things. So, if I do a product of two things and one thing will be fixed and second thing I, I train myself. Okay. So, let's say product, let's say 
take a scenario throwing a ball in the wall and i want to train myself that how much i apply a force so that ball can reach over here what is the fixed over here wall is the fixed what is the changing things are here throwing the ball or forcing of the my arm okay so convolution between my force and wall one thing will be fixed so what is the fixed in the hand written digit images will be fixed however you write i will not force human to change his writing i force my algorithm to train according to his writing fine so what is there i will adjust i throw this then ball reach here i have to force too much ball reach here so some tunable parameter there as sir said in the design steps involved in the design some trainable parameter some tunable parameter are there so in the cnn there is a convolution process between image and filters and what is the filter nothing but collection of numbers so that numbers we will tune so that if they multiply with the image they will give us the correct answer so that is the cnn convolution neural network okay so whatever we think whatever we said we will convert them into the coding okay so as uh, as you little bit aware of maybe matlab in the matlab what is there if you want to use any instruction you do not have to write the import thing why because matlab is the company driven software like in the ios okay the functionality is there you need not to download from the google play reinstall and use but if you work on the android phones if you have android phone you have to search the name of software you have to go to google play you have to download you have to run and then use similarly as the python is the open source the only thing related to python is that you have to import the library that you want to use okay so you should be aware of the name of the library so what we are using here tensorflow okay so keras is a part of tensorflow so from tensorflow import keras so you can see the different colors from is in the green tensorflow is in the black so what is there from is a keyword in the python fine from is a fixed word and then after that you need to mention from which from where you want to import so from tensorflow import keras okay tensorflow is a big name let's give a nickname to tensorflow so import tensorflow as tf tensorflow tf second one is the you we, we have to use the data set so some popular data sets are there in the machine learning and deep learning library and that data set because they are too much popular not in the teaching but in the demonstration and everywhere in the world so teras what uh, keras what has done tensorflow what has done they have inbuilt they have saved the data set in their library these are the inbuilt data set okay some of the popular data set are iris data set where flowers are given you have to categorize flower based on the sepal length sepal width petal length petal width okay iris versicolor iris setosa and iris virginica some another popular data set are diabetic data set parameters will be given whether patient will develop diabetes or not okay so from tensorflow dot keras dot data set import the mnist okay please remember if you aware of this word if you aware of this fancy word that's okay otherwise it will this mnist data set is itself a synonym of like a godfather of the data set if you going to read machine learning or you are expertise in the machine learning you have thousand time heard this data set and then we will develop some model based on the some layers okay so again reduce the difficulty cnn is the hierarchical architecture many layers will be there how many names you remember to reduce the difficulty what you have to write star from tensorflow dot keras dot layers import star what is mean by star import all the layers present in the keras okay and then there will be some little bit computation required so for that purpose we are using the numerical python that is the numpy so import numpy as np 
okay and then we will build some model so we are using some model type so there are two model types in the keras one is the sequential one is the functional if single input type of data is available if single output data type is available then you would sequential here what is the single thing image only we will give image we will not give video we will not give signals we will not give anything else only image we will give and what is the expectation numerical numbers whether the given image is a zero whether the image is a one or whatever it is okay so that's why we are using the sequential fun, uh, sequential model okay so there are various way to run a python program there are various ide integrated development environment one of the popular is the zupyter that i am currently using one is the spider but i must suggest that if you have a good internet connectivity go with the google collab yes. what is the google collab google Col collaboratory so important part is that what i am continuously focusing on we have to reduce our efforts so why to install this library and please mind that installing library is not a difficult task controlling the versions of the library is difficult task as the python is the open source someone developed the tensorflow but python not developed someone upgraded the keras but tensorflow not updated so you will be stuck in the different version of tensorflow keras pytorch and python opencv numpy why to deal with this let's manage this to be google google is the many solu uh, solution of many problems are ours so one is the google collab so what is the google collab google collab is the open source is the internet based ide integrated development platform to write run execute python programs with the help of tensorflow and keras because it is developed by google only so tensorflow and keras are inbuilt part of google collab no need to install another problem in the area of machine learning and deep learning is that these machine learning and deep learning are the data driven technique what is mean by data driven the amount of data we, we will give they will learn better but again we, our laptops our computers have limited resources limited capacity okay so you buy a 1.5 lakh laptop after two years it will be obsolete your code will not run so what happened so google collab for the limited data set provide the free subscription you can use it free but if you want to do if you want to do research with the little bit more data there is a subscription available only 900 rupees per month google providing servers for you kind of a cloud computing you have seen the aws you have seen the azure you now it is the google google collab okay so google collab is another useful library okay so currently i am running on the zupyter because i don't aware of that internet will be there or connectivity will be there or not so uh, frequently i will switch between zupyter google collab or spider but instruction will be same everywhere python will be same everywhere so, while uh, giving large data sets it won't get stuck sir in the google collab yes, sir. yeah so please mind all the parameters for the successful execution of your program okay so important thing is that if the large data set then what is mean by large data set if you have a 100 gray scale image you will say that i have a large data set but if i say i have a 50 rgb images then my data set will be more than you fine if you say that i have a 100 gray scale image of 28 cross 28 i say that i have a 10 image of 1000 cross 1000 then my data set will be large fine if you say that i want to run for the 10 epoch but when i say that i want to run for the 95 percent accuracy till i not achieve the 95 percent accuracy then in that case my computation will be more so based on your requirement you so google core app for the certain amount of computation provide the free resources otherwise for a large data set for a large computation you have to buy the subscription otherwise generally the popular laptops are nvidia graphic card enable laptops fine I will no, not spe specify the company name, but I surely specify the graphic card. So nowadays, the graphic card series is the RTX, ray tracing based graphic cards. Fine. So let's get back to the work. So yeah. So 
interface are there little bit similar to the matlab in the matlab also what you have to do a green arrow is there to run any program so yeah i have run this cell so all the libraries are imported now what is the important part in the machine learning as sir has said tpe task performance experience okay so t we have decided t we have decided what is task hand written digit recognition what is performance in a best possible way fine in a best possible way okay there is a huge difference between 9 million and 8 million difference of 1 million so zero recognize properly but if we have not recognize 9 and 8 properly too much of loss so in the best possible way we have to recognize with the almost ideally 100% but almost 95% accuracy fine and then what is the experience experience means learning okay so every time you run a machine learning or deep learning code divide your data set into two parts one is the training phase one is the testing phase important part is that your model should not see test image during the training phase your model should not send training data during the test phase otherwise biasing will be there if you want accurate result biasing should be 100% avoided how to avoid biasing with before starting or before building your model architecture divide data set into two parts train phase and test phase but in that train phase and test phase also keep in mind that training should be proper what is what is the mean by proper training you not only give the images but you also give the labels that this image looks like 8 this image looks like 7 this image looks like 6 okay so that is a kind of a supervised learning you are not only providing the images you are providing the class labels also so that's why x train will contain the image y train will contain the label x test and y test okay and then data set is already there mnist what you have to write dot load data load data is a inbuilt instruction of the keras and tensorflow no need to write code for that fine after completing the code you will think like that this is very very easy this is easy but keep in mind coding is easy very easy that so that you take advantage and focus on building architecture focus on the your training phase fine if something is easy save your time for the another thing fine so let's divide data set into the train phase and test phase okay so the mnist digit data i am telling you the character i character uh, demographic of this data very very popular so by heart i remember there are total 70000 images in the mnist hand written digit data set among this 70000 generally we keep 60000 for the train phase 10000 for the test phase and each and every image is a gray scale image each and every image is a size of 28 cross 28 as sir has told in the first slide itself what is image nothing but dimension what is dimension height and width find 2d image so 28 cross 28 28 cross 28 28 pixels 28 pixel to to total pixels 28 cross 28 fine so the important part of any machine learning and deep learning is when you are developing something there should be hundreds of checkpoint what is the checkpoint what you are thinking what you are think, doing is same replicated over here or not so what is the thing you you know mnist digit data set is 70000 28 cross 28 but before moving forward check whether the the machine has acquired the data set correctly or not what is the steps in the machine learning acquisition of data so we are doing the acquisition of data here okay so let's print the shapes yeah it is currently correctly printed so x train having the 60000 image each image is of shape of 68 cross 60 20, sorry 28 cross 28 so now shape of x train is 60000 comma 28 comma 28 in the test phase 10 10 10000 images are there so 10000 comma 28 comma 28 and in the y train there will be no image why only labels will be there 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so that's why 60000 labels because it belongs to the train and then 10000 in the test so x train x test y train y test okay so 
सो इमेज रो हाइट इज दी ट्वेंटी एट इमेज कॉलम हाइट इज दी ट्वेंटी एट ओके एंड देन देन अगेन चेक पॉइंट ओके ट्राई टू विजुअलाइज दी डेटा वेदर यू अंडरस्टैंड और नॉट ट्राई टू विजुअलाइज वाई बिकॉज इफ यू विजुअलाइज दी डेटा यू विल कन्फर्म दैट यूअर कंप्यूटर हैज एक्वायर्ड दैट डेटा करेक्टली ओके सो देर आर वेरियस डेटा सो लेट्स टेक देर आर सिक्सटी थाउजेंड इमेजेस सो लेट्स टेक थर्ड इमेज ऑफ द ट्रेन सेट जीरो इमेज ऑफ द ट्रेन सेट फर्स्ट इमेज ऑफ द ट्रेन सेट सेकेंड और थर्ड ओके fine you can see that someone can write 5 like that someone can write 0 like that someone can write 4 like this someone can write 1 like this fine images are there okay you can observe that first maybe i'm not sure but maybe we can confuse with this as a 3 fine s s but the labels are 0 to 9 so we will not confuse with the s okay otherwise this can be confused with the l also so here what is the what is the fixed label 0 to 9 so first image can be confused with the 3 fine so that is the difficulty fine there is a difference between 3 million and 5 million fine so this is the our data set now move forward okay so the important part of this library is that this library take the input in a particular fashion in a particular manner okay so the important part of this library is that you know the format of the input accepted by this library only little bit few things you need to know because these are higher level libraries so many complex thing they have done for you like you do not have to write the code for the convolution they have the code for the convolution but they are saying that this convolution instruction accept in the data in the certain format what is the format in that they are accepting the number of images the height and width of the image and then at last if you are able to see one is written what is mean by one one is for gray scale if i write 3 over here then rgb image okay so let's reshape our data so earlier x train was nothing what what was x train 60028 28 no one was there at last so do this and for the test also okay and then i am continuously saying check what you are doing check what you are doing okay so we have check that we have said that 60000 images are in the x train so check it is coming 60000 okay and these images having the integer number but we have to divide something we have to multiply something so there may be chances of floating point representation also so convert your data set into the float okay so x train dot asf float 32 and then divide by 255 okay so as sir has mentioned let's say image is of a 8 bit gray scale image 0 to 255 are level calculation is difficult divide by 255 now your image will be in the 0 to 1 range calculation is easy fine do some tips and tricks okay you are human you have intelligent apply that fine so i have divided by 255 okay now if someone wants to see the x train this is the x train okay data data and too much data inside that okay now the number of classes are 10 okay so so what happen so one thing is the single label but we have ten label so categorizing the label categorizing the label is like that there are ten label you can find 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 ten labels are there and 0 1 2 3 4 5 fifth number one that means in the white range the zeroth image is from the fifth category fifth okay and we have seen over here now we have seen over here we have seen over here this is the fifth one fine so now labels are perfect now images are perfect okay now we are ready to prepare a model okay so what is the cnn model convolution neural network so first step is the convolution process so this is the deep learning what is mean by deep learning going deeper to mine the features fine how to go deeper okay how to train uh, myself for the throwing a ball at the various distances 1 feet 2 feet 3 feet 
सो हियर वॉट इज दर्निंग लर्निंग इज नथिंग बट अ कॉन्वेल्यूशन एंड वॉट इज द इम्पॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ कॉन्वेल्यूशन वन थिंग विल बी फिक्स वन थिंग विल बी वेरी वॉट इज द फिक्स थिंग इनपुट इमेज वॉट इज द वेरिंग थिंग वेट्स ऑफ द फिल्टर सो देर आर थर्टी टू फिल्टर एंड ईच फिल्टर हैविंग दी थ्री क्रॉस थ्री टोटल नाइन वेट्स एंड देन एक्टिवेशन फंक्शन वॉट इज मीन बाई एक्टिवेशन The things combined wired together should be fired together. What? What is mean by that? The neurons which are learning should be propagated to the next level. So that is the activation function, rectified linear unit we are taking. Again, I have inserted one convolution layer, so I need to increase the filters for learning more. So 64 filters are there, and then I have max pool. to reduce the computation. What is mean by max pool? Let's say four numbers are there. I pick highest number. because that is contributing more okay and then i have inserted a dropout layer what is mean by dropout 25% of will be dropped out okay we do this in the class na <coughs> what we are doing we are changing the sitting arrangement of a student why because in a particular sitting arrangement student are students are habituated of their neighbors okay two friends are there yaar you do the computation part i will do the coding part but in the company visa versa can be there interviewer can ask anything so we change the sitting position similarly with the neurons if all the neurons are wired together and continuously propagating they have a habituated of learning same thing drop 25% of neuron so that next 75% can learn same thing means all the things fine and then as i have said the cnn is a part of two things convolution plus na neural network c plus nn so convolution part we have done now it is the neural network so neural network is nothing but what nodal architecture input nodes hidden nodes output nodes so that nodes in the keras is called the dense layer so before that we have vectorized everything that's why it is written flatten now there are 28 nodes are there that's why dense 28 again drop out and at the last what you want you want 10 scores let's say 0 to 9 and the probability of number of fifth is the 95% and last uh, rest of the 0.05% probability distributed among others so what you will do you will vote to the highest probability and say that the given input image is of fifth category that means the label of given input image is of fine so, so that's why you need 10 score so that's why i have written dense in bracket number of classes number of classes are 10 and then what is there if your model is trained in the single way in the single epoch okay otherwise you have to optimize your model you have to optimize your weights so that's why before optimization you need to calculate the loss if i throwing the ball and it reach up to the 1 feet i know only 1 feet so i will force more if it is reach up to the there 100 feet i have to reduce the force so that's why calculation of loss is necessary so that's why i have inserted the loss in and then i want accuracy and then the summary of my model okay so the summary of model my is this okay first is the convolution layer then again convolution then max pooling then drop out then flatten then again dense layer there are total number of this much parameter okay and then i have to fit in the fit my model i have to show i have to mention that 10 number of epoch my model should run okay so what is verbose so verbose is nothing but you want train accuracy test accuracy spatially or just you want to show limited thing how many things you want to show during the real time verbosity fine so my model is training my model is training continuously going on okay so there are total 60000 images i have decided the best size as a 10 so 60000 by 10 6000 that's why it is running for 6000 it is showing the loss it is showing the accuracy loss is 0.49 accuracy is 0.85 do not add that one these are not probability otherwise you say sir 0.8 plus 0.4 is 1.2 no different fine so continuously increasing so i have decided the one epoch it will take uh, let's say eta elapsed time so 2 minutes within 2 minutes it will train and uh, you can observe that just within the one minute 90% accuracy i have achieved that is the beauty of convolution neural network very less epoch without giving any feature training is going on with high accuracy 
अदरवाइज नंबर ऑफ फीचर्स सो वेन देर आर नंबर ऑफ फीचर्स थिंग्स आर बायस ऑल्सो फाइन बिकॉज वॉट हैपन ह्यूमन इमोशंस आर एवरीवेयर सी वाई वी आर गोइंग फॉर द स्टॉक मार्केट प्रिडिक्शन यूजिंग डीप लर्निंग वाई बिकॉज बाइंग द स्टॉक्स सम सेंटिमेंट्स आर देयर आई लाइक पावर स्टॉक्स आई लाइक एनर्जी स्टॉक्स विदाउट यूजिंग द मार्केट एनालिसिस आई एम बाइंग बिकॉज आई 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 वॉन्ट टू परचेज दैट बट वैन आई डू एनालिसिस आई गेट द एग्जैक्ट थिंग दैट्स वाई सिमिलरली इन द फीचर एक्सट्रैक्शन ऑल्सो ह्यूमन बाइसिंग इज इन्वॉल्व कैलकुलेशन इन इन्वॉल्व ओके यू से हंड्रेड फीचर्स इज दैट हंड्रेड फीचर्स आर रियली यूजफुल और ओनली वन ऑफ दैम और ओनली टेन ऑफ दैम यूजफुल नो नीड ऑफ फीचर कैलकुलेशन ओवर हियर यू कैन ऑब्जर्व दैट ऑलमोस्ट विद इन वन मिनट लेस देन वन मिनट नाइन्टी थ्री परसेंट एक्यूरेसी आई हैव अचीव फाइन सो दैट इज द यूटिलिटी ऑफ कॉन्वोल्यूशन न्यूरल नेटवर्क विदाउट डूइंग एनी थिंग जस्ट गिविंग द डेटा सेट प्रिपेयर अ मॉडल ऑर्किटेक्चर सॉल्व अ प्रॉब्लम Fine. This is easy task. Think about the cancerous data. Think about the satellite data. Different. Industry data you use. So yeah, handwritten digit recognition, like sir has mentioned, in the check hand handwriting are there. We are using that in the forensic. You can use also. Various applications are there. So nowadays, uh, the the uh, the. Uh, uh we are going through the some uh, digital storage also okay like google drive so we provide storage for a student that you uh, we have stored your uh, final year mark sheet into that and that is verified how how some higher authority sign on that and we are recognizing the character this is written by correctly or not fine yeah so now with the one epoch we got the almost 97% accuracy fine so <clears throat> sorry okay Okay. Oh, sorry. Why underscore test underscore copy? Yes. Name please not defined. fine so yeah so yeah so uh, this way you predict the thing okay so just one library is not installed because it is jupyter same problem when you doing the google collab so what happen you can predict the classes okay so 97 with the 97% of the accuracy we have predicted the hand written digit classes fine so almost uh, 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 from the 10000 99700 images we have correctly classified fine so this is one of the example and you can give your inbuilt data set also Any other doubt? Please, uh, we we'll close it within few minutes. I request you for any doubts. So, you know, so please just clarify. And, uh, any questions? I forgot to mention on uh, Sister Girl also. You uh, are listening to me. Please be followed up with me. And uh, I'm very happy to be part of this. Let me be. Now, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something. As I said already, I'm always.
having uh, the approval from ugc we always work with the people nearby and we would like to hand hold some of the people who would like to work in different domains uh, with the expertise that we have with our university and uh, as i said earlier except computer science about uh, 70 to 80% computer science faculty or doctorates except that all of the departments are uh, doctorates only where they are from different universities and iits and iits across the country not specific to telugu states 50 percentage of our faculty are non telugu speakers at least 50 percent are non telugu they don't know telugu uh, so that has uh, diversity with multiple people from across the country where you can work and uh, collaborate for projects the that's a continuous process with our university who work with uh, people who, who are working in uh, latest domains very specifically we update ourselves like of course being a college having lot of limitations but being university there is no limitation i can start some program today i can send my faculty for 6 months to some industry to get trained i can send the student faculty to abroad a uh, lot of things we follow that that makes university obviously different so you can also take the advantage of such things i tell my students that i have a faculty from iit you enter the iit through the faculty same way like if you have collaboration through network you can always achieve especially the act act is initiative is really appreciated during covid times without making the people away from the technologies they they started lot of uh, programs and that is good, that is getting lot of good response very recently as i said in the beginning we got the program in association with the uh, indian council for agriculture research in in all seeds research in uh, rajendra nagar we have tied up with them and our uh, students are working in fields uh, working on deep learning fields iot fields like that and the faculty members are publishing the uh, collaboration or uh, the research collaboration from those universities any students or anyone this is all technology is always open and you can always work there is no barrier like government organization we are not the government like you know not criticizing they may they will have a lot of uh, constraints but we don't have such constraints if you are really interested you can always work with us our faculty members are always open that's a standing instruction to our faculty member to collaborate with anyone only thing is there should be some good interest also push self drive from your end which will definitely make you different from others once again i would like to express my uh, deep sense of uh, thanks to the management of lit and uh, principal uh, narsimhu sir and uh, hod and other uh, coordinators conveners for inviting me here we'll hope we'll meet again and uh, in the afternoon session i think uh, you have the session through one of my friends uh, dr jv ravindra principal of fordman college is also expertised in uh, signal processing hopefully that will also be a wonderful session in the afternoon thank you so much and good day thank you sir i would like to thank you our uh, thanks our distinguished guest dr l koteshwar rao sir for making this session very not only inform, uh, informative interesting as well as the interactive surely sir we are going to come to your university for our research work and uh, we will send our students even for projects also sir and uh, i will also thank to uh, dr uh, hitesh uh, tekwan chandi sir for uh, providing Uh, a practical exposure related to the python uh, especially for the jupiter and cnn and uh, uh, from my uh, deep heart uh, gratitude i will be thankful to everyone for attending this uh, uh, session and uh, now i request uh, our uh, convener of fdp and hod ec dr rasul sir to present a small token of gift to the uh, dr koteshwar uh, sir
वी विल बी जॉइनिंग फॉर द नेक्स्ट सेशन एट टू पी एम थैंक यू एवरी मच